Animating a shake to the camera is useful in many situations, to show an earthquake, an explosion or heavy footsteps. And that's what we'll be looking at today. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to this week's tutorial. If you're new here, my name's Darren T and I make Open Tunes tutorials and the occasional animation. And if that's the sort of thing you like, then why not subscribe to follow along. I've had a couple of very similar viewer questions recently that I'd like to answer, both asking how you can shake the camera in Open Tunes. One asking about an earthquake and the other about last week's video. Well last week I finished my animation for the Portal Journey collaboration and in that I had the screen shake as the dinosaur walked. To do this or the earthquake style effect there's the easy way that I used last week and a slightly more complex but flexible way that I've covered before, but I'll go over it again today. So the easy way is to simply use the animate tool and move the camera. And you do this on consecutive frames so there's no slow movement between frames, just jerky twitches of the camera vibrating. So I've not prepared anything for today so I'll just draw in a quick scene now. So here you can see me drawing a very simple scene and I'm drawing it all using vector levels because that's just my preferred level to draw on. Now I've broken the background into two levels, the sky and grass in one level and the mountains in the other. And this is just to try and make the scene look more realistic where you most likely have multiple levels for the foreground and background. And I'm also adding two characters on here, again just to add more levels and to add more interest into the scene. So you can see I've just drawn a very simple animation just to show something happening in the scene. So as you may know, you can use the animate tool at the top left here to move the drawings in one of the columns. So I'll change the center position, one character to, just so it's less confusing and we know which character is which. And then change the position, and all we need to do to create a shake effect is to set a key for the first frame, move to the next frame, move the character up, next frame, move the character down, next frame, up, down, up, down. And we'll make the movement slightly smaller each time. So if we take a look at how that looks, and you see a small vibration around the middle of the animation. But obviously that's only one character moving, and we want the whole screen to move. So we just need to use the same principle on the camera that we did with the character. So let's just remove those keys. And to animate the camera, we just need to change the selection in the drop down at the top left there. So we change the camera one, as we've only got one camera. And we're adjusting the position. So all we need to do is to move to a frame. And now we're ready to move it. And you can see in the centre of the screen, the name of the object being moved, which is the camera, camera one. So again, we'll add a key for the first frame. We'll move along, move the camera up a little bit, move along, move it down, then move it up, down, up, down. And I'm going to make this go slightly smaller movements each time. Okay, and that's set. But first we'll change to the camera view using this button at the top of the table there. And then when we press play, we'll see a vibration in the middle. So there's two things that immediately stand out from this. The first one is the top of the canvas, you see white appearing. And that's because I didn't draw the background big enough to cover the area where I've now moved the camera. So I just need to expand the background, and I'll do that in a second. And the second thing is, at the end of the animation, there's a small jump as the camera resets to frame one. And that's because the final position of the camera, after the movement, wasn't at the same position as it was at the beginning of the animation. But you'll see that in a second. So firstly, let's fix this background issue. If I go from the camera view to the camera stand view, as I move through the frames, you'll see exactly there where the camera goes outside of the background area. So all we need to do is to change the background level for sky and grass, and we'll select the sky area and make it slightly larger. And then as I move through the frames, you see the camera stays within the background area. So this isn't so much of a problem for vector levels as we've got an infinite canvas, so we can just resize the background or the characters to fit the area where the camera is going to move. But if you use raster or tunes raster levels, when you create a new level, by default it creates it the same size as the screen. So as soon as you move the camera, you move outside of where you've drawn. So if you're using raster levels, when you create a new one, you just need to change the size of the drawings, width and height to allow you some room to move the camera, 
or you'll need to zoom in the camera slightly so you're working within that frame. But this is another reason why I find it useful to use vector levels, because it gives you this flexibility. And the second problem I spotted was the end of the camera movement didn't match up with the start of the camera movement, so in the cycle there was a small jump at the end. So the way we fix this is with the function editor. So if we change to a room with the function editor in, and to see the camera changes we have to show the position of camera 1. So we expand that and show the east-west and north-south coordinates. And here you can see the movement left and right and up and down. And you can see the camera starts at position 0, 0. So if we want this animation to be cyclable, we need to end at 0, 0. And we can do that by double clicking in one of the frames and then just typing 0 and pressing enter. And again for north and south, type 0, press enter. So now if we take a look at the animation, you see the vibration and then the camera resets back to the centre point. And of course if you wanted to, you could have typed in all the values using the function editor. And this gives you much more control over the values. So you can see here we go from 0 for north and south movement, up to a maximum of around 9. Then it goes down to 7, then 6, 4, 3, 2 and 0. So that starts with the larger movements at the beginning and then goes to smaller movements at the end. And just a quick tip while you're making these movements, you can of course lock the camera in one direction. So for instance if you only wanted the camera to move up and down, you can lock the east-west value by clicking the padlock to the right of east-west. And then wherever you move the mouse cursor, whether it goes left and right or not, the camera only actually moves up and down. And the east-west value stays at zero. And for this animation, we didn't need the camera moving left and right, so I can just simply highlight over the east-west values, and then hit the delete key. And now when I play the animation, the camera only moves up and down. Okay, so the final way you can change these values is by using the graph view. And on the function editor, you get to that by pressing the button at the top right. And the graph view is a little tricky to use, and I've talked about this in other videos. But basically, if you click and drag along the top, you can expand that area or reduce that area. And if you click and drag down the left and right, you can do the same to make the points more spaced out or closer together. And if you use the middle mouse button, which I've mapped to one of the buttons on my pen for my drawing tablet, I can click and drag it to move the graph anywhere I need to. So now I can expand further to make these points further apart and to make the frames further apart. And if I make that wider there, you can see exactly where we are. So as I move the animation through, you start to see a line come across which shows the frame numbers. So the first edit appears here on frame 13, and the frame numbers are represented across the top. And then it moves to 14 when the camera goes up, then down at 15, then up, down, up, down. And you can see the values changing more visually using the graph editor. And you can also edit them this way. So all you need to do is highlight the attribute that we need to change, that's north-south. You see the line immediately change to red. And now you can click and drag around any of the points to highlight them and then move them up and down to change their value. So just move these to change how much or how little the camera shakes. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So for different camera shakes, you'd create different patterns. So for an earthquake, you'd make the shake last longer and possibly vary the intensity, starting off quite violent and then reducing it, possibly moving it in waves, where it's violent, then slower, then violent, then slower, depending on the effect you're trying to achieve. But for the foot stomp of the dinosaur I used last week, this is the kind of pattern I had. So as well as adding the camera shake, you might want to add a small blur effect to add some camera blur and make this look more realistic. But because the camera shake values are hidden in the function editor, you can't see them on the X sheet. And if you need to move them, you can only move them in the function editor by clicking and dragging each one frame by frame to the new position. So if in your animation you wanted to insert some space before the camera shake, you'd have to insert the space on the X sheet, do your animation, and then come back to the function editor and move the frames for the shake, which isn't ideal. It would be easier if you could see the movement in the X sheet itself. And then when you inserted space on the X sheet, you can move the keys for the camera shake at the same time as moving the animation. Now I've covered this in a separate video in more detail and there's a link to that in the description. But let me show you briefly how you could do it here. So first I remove those keys by highlighting and then pressing delete. 
And then what we need to do is to insert a new column. And I always like to use vector levels for this. So I'll add a new vector level. And then we need to know where the camera is so we can edit the shake a lot easier. So let's just take the brush tool. And I'll draw on the corner very roughly of the camera. And then when this level moves, you can see how far it's moved relative to the camera box drawn on screen. And all you need to do at the appropriate time is move to that frame, change the animate tool, make sure you're on position, lock either north, south or east and west if you need the camera to move just in one direction. We'll leave east west locked because we want the camera to move up and down. Now I'll add a key on this first frame as we did before and you see the key appear on the X sheet. Then I'll use the right cursor key to move down to the next frame and I'll start to move the camera. Now if you need to see the position then you will want to extend this frame down so you've got those markers on the corners of the camera but if you don't then you don't have to. Okay so let's start moving. So we'll move this column up so the lines are above the camera box then move it down so they're below up so they're above a little bit more down but slightly less and we'll keep doing this as we did before until it's roughly back to the center so let's take a look at that and I think you know what we're going to see so you see the camera markers vibrating the same sort of pattern we had before but they're not actually affecting the camera and to make them affect the camera we need to do one very simple thing and that's attaching the camera to that column in the stage schematic so you change to a view with the schematic in it and remember the FX schematic and stage schematic are the same control but you just change between the two of them by clicking the button at the bottom right here like this. I'll change the column name so we recognize what it is in the schematic easier and I'll call this my cam. Okay so we can see the my cam column here and all you need to do is to connect it to the camera column. So that everywhere that this column moves, the camera moves as well. So let's see how that looks. And there we can see the camera vibrating. And one thing to change for the final output is we don't need to see the markers in the output. So we untick the I button and that removes them from the final output. And if you want to, you can untick this button so you don't see them while you're editing. So I'll leave them on for now. So let's go back to the function editor just to see how they look. So we'll turn off the camera column, we'll take a look at our new my cam column, and we'll take a look at the north south values. And you can see the keys that we've added. So we started off slightly off centre, and then we move the camera quite a lot, up to 10, vibrating down through 9, 7, 6, 2, and then back to the beginning. So we didn't start in exactly the centre, I must have clicked on the table while I was on frame 1. So we'll double click in here, and type 0, bring it back to 0 and again in this first key. So for the first 19 frames, the camera doesn't move at all. And again, we'll finish on zero. So the camera returns back to the first position. So if we take a look at that, and we see it just shaking until we go to the camera view, and now take a look, and we'll see the screen shaking. But now because the keys are on the X sheet, we can insert space at the beginning by using the menu item under X sheet that says insert frame. Now I've already mapped the keyboard shortcut shift and insert so I can use the keyboard shortcut to insert multiple frames but you notice all the keys move down for the camera animation as well as any other movements I've put during this animation so it's much easier to edit later if you've got a separate column but that's your choice of which method you choose so that's it that's how you can add a camera shape to your animations to simulate an earthquake monster stomping a train passing explosions or anything else that shakes the ground why not give it a go? Add some shape to your animations. And I'll be back next week with more OpenTunes goodness. And that's a guarantee.